This morning, I want to share the word of God with you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 9. Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 1 to 9. Lord, I pray that you shall bless the preaching of your word and receive all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray and I believe. Somebody say amen. Amen. Isaiah 6, verse 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people. I have seven lessons, seven quick lessons that I'd like us to learn out of this portion of scripture. Seven quick lessons that we want to learn from the life of Isaiah and his interaction with God out of this portion of scripture. And the first lesson that we learn, uh, the main lesson, Two main lessons. The first one, one of the main lessons in this piece of scripture is that God does not reveal himself to people because they are good. God does not reveal himself to people because they are good. God reveals himself to people because he is good. And how do you see that in that portion of scripture? You see that because God reveals himself to Isaiah. And Isaiah, by his own admission, he confesses and says, I am unclean. I am an unclean man. I have unclean lips. The meaning of unclean lips is that my language is dirty. I speak dirty language, you know. And according to scripture, how we know scripture, the Bible tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if a man has got Dirty language, it means there's an element of uncleanness inside his heart. And Isaiah is confessing and saying that I am an, a man of unclean lips. And uh, that is an indication that there is a sort of uncleanness in his heart. And he says that, and he even says that I dwell, I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips. That were, those are the people that here in Kenya, we like to call Kamati Yarochafu. People who have nothing good to say about anyone. People who have no good opinions about anything. And Isaiah was dwelling amongst those people, and some of those behaviors of those people had already rubbed into him and he was behaving like them because, you know, we are always a product of our environment. And so now uh, Isaiah confesses, man, I am unclean, but I have seen the Lord. That is to tell you like this, that God does not reveal himself to people because they are good. God reveals himself to people because he is good. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 5, God tells the children of Israel, it is not because of your righteousness, nor your uprightness of heart, 
that you are entering into this land to possess it. So I want you to know this. Uh, it is important for you to know that so that you, you stop disqualifying yourself. When God is passing by, you, you do not disqualify yourself that God cannot minister to you because you are not good enough. Some people believe they are not good enough to serve God. I am not good enough to appear before God. I am not good enough. Eh, 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 eh. Nobody here is disqualified this morning. You who thinks you are not good enough, you are the one that God has come for this morning. Somebody say amen. Second main lesson you see in this, in this scripture is that people do not serve God because they qualify. People do not serve God because they qualify. It is God who qualifies those that serve him. Why? Because Isaiah by the time he is seeing God in, 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 in chapter 6 and confessing that he is unclean, Isaiah has already been serving God for six chapters. He has already been in the ministry. He was already prophesying from chapter 1, chapter 2, up to chapter 6. He was already working for God, and yet he was not perfect. I have come to tell you this morning that people do not serve God because they are perfect. People do not serve God because they qualify. It is God who qualifies those that serve him. Why is that important? It is important for you to know that because uh, so that you, in the course of your stay within the church, you will become aware of the failures of fellow brothers and fellow sisters. It is important for you to know that so that you can be graceful and merciful with people in their failures, and in their weaknesses. Why? Because uh, uh, you will not be asking certain questions. How can uh, a brother talk like that? How can a sister do, do that? Uh, 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 you have seen in the Bible that people don't serve God because they are perfect. It's God who perfects those that serve him. It is also important for you to know that so that you can be lenient even with yourself when you fail, when you fall short. Because let me tell you something, you are human. There's no way you can live here on earth all the days of your life and you fail to come short of a mark somewhere. Nobody here woke up in heaven. This is not heaven. Happen in Nairobi. This is Nairobi city. Everybody, there's nobody who woke up in heaven and came here. Only the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus, only God, but you, you have come from here to Upper IV, so we expect you to have certain behaviors that Kenyans have. When you are overtaken by those behaviors, be lenient with yourself. Stop being so hard on yourself. Stop judging yourself. Eh? You know, be lenient with yourself because God has been lenient with you. What could you pick sana until you post yourself on on Facebook, and we didn't even know. You are the one who is telling us, at you, you know, I am just made of clay. Ah, what a kutuambia. Don't post your failures. Let me help you, people of Nairobi. People of Nairobi, with your Facebook and social media behaviors, let me help you. If you fail, keep it to yourself. Nisiriako. Stop telling people when you fail at you, oh, you know, we are made of clay, so there is this day, say, Jui, I did what and I didn't know. Ah, you keep it to yourself. You know why? Because the people you are telling them, they will not, they will judge you very harshly. They will judge you very harshly. If you are looking for love from people on social media, by exposing your weaknesses to people, let me tell you, verily, verily, I say unto you, your funeral is coming closer. Yeah. Don't tell people your failures. Never post anything wrong you have ever done. Post only what good you think you can do. You don't joke with these people. 
Let me tell you, I have a, I have a scripture to back my, my point. One night in Jerusalem, two men failed. Two men failed equally. Peter and Judas. Judas betrayed Jesus and Jesus was killed. And Judas and Peter, Peter denied Jesus three times. That, that's a failure. Both of them failed equally. Judas was more commercial with his failures because he made some money out of it. Peter failed for free. But every one of them was, came up with conviction. The conviction of the Holy Spirit came upon them. Peter, uh, uh, Judas went to seek forgiveness from the people. He went to the Pharisees and he told them, we have betrayed innocent blood. Please take back your money. They told him, your money perish with you. You go and perish. We don't care. We have no love for you. We have no mercy for you. You go perish with your money. Uh, Judas went out, the Bible says, and he hanged himself. Peter failed God. When he denied Jesus the third time, the Bible says, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and he looked at him and he remembered what Jesus had told him. The Bible says, and Peter went out and wept bitterly unto the Lord. When Jesus was forming the church, he went to look for Peter in Galilee because Peter was not stupid. Yeah, Peter was not a fool. He qualified to be a bishop. And he is the first bishop of this Christianity. But he failed just like Judas. How you behave yourself when you fail will determine whether you will see the glory of God for the next level. Don't expose your failures. Nisiriyako. Kauka nayo. Kauka nayo. Vienye tu ulijificha. Ukifanya. Jifiche kikilipuka. I'm just telling you. Because these people will crucify you. Don't post your baby daddy. He will lose his job. Ama na mnagani? The, second th the third thing that I want us to learn from this scripture is that God reveals himself to his servants. God will reveal, when you begin to serve God, God will reveal himself to you. In verse 3 of Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible shows us how God revealed himself to Isaiah. And Isaiah saw God. And in the presence of God, he saw, there are two things that God revealed to Isaiah here. The first thing that he revealed to him was his nature. And he saw angels. Those are what we call seraphim. There are angels, holy angels of God, who dwell in the presence of God that are called seraphim. They had six wings and like that. Okay, look at verse 3. I want verse 3. And one cried to another. You know they are talking. One is telling the other one, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts and the whole earth is full of his glory. You see now this holy angel is now describing God to his colleague. One is telling the other one, he's describing God as holy. You see, he did not describe God as being holy. He described God as being holy Holy, holy, yani holy three times. Eh? Because angels are holy. But the level, the dimension of holiness that angels dwell in is not the same as the dimension of holiness that God dwells in. God is holy three times. I know you think this is just rhetoric, repeating of words, but let me show you. We have stories in the Bible of holy men of God who were tempted and they fell into sin. Like Noah, he was a holy man. 
The Bible actually tells us that Noah walked with God. He was a holy man. But one day he was tempted. We have stories of people like Moses who were very holy. They even used to see God face to face. But one day Moses was tempted. He became angry and he beat the rock. We have not only stories of holy men. That is to tell you that holy men can be tempted. And holy men can fail. We also have stories in the Bible of holy angels who were tempted and they fell. Remember the stories in the book of Genesis of the angels. The Bible says, and one day the sons of God, they saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. Those girls in Iraq, Middle East, you know we have to differentiate, you have to know where it was. You just look at them when they, get, when they take those pictures, Kwandegea Emirates, Qatar Airlines. Even angels in heaven, they came and got married here. Holy angels, holy angels. They came and they married the children, the daughters of men. We have stories in the Bible of an archangel a holy archangel who was tempted and he fell and was thrown out of heaven. But we don't have a story of God being tempted or God sinning because where God dwells, there that is called holy, 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 sin cannot come there. Temptation cannot come there. Therefore, God will never sin. God will never fall. God cannot be disobedient. God will never backslide. Therefore, he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You can trust him. There will be no changes. So this man is describing, he, God showed him his nature, that he is not only holy, he is holy and then holy, and holy again. And in the dimension where God dwells, sin cannot take effect there. One day the Bible says that the sons of God appeared before God and the devil also came. But when he came there, he did not come to call the shots. In the presence of God, up there, the devil cannot call the shots. He is not as powerful as you think. He is not as powerful as you make him to be. When he comes there, he comes to receive orders. The best he can do is to make a suggestion. He can change nothing there. That's the first thing that this man was shown by God. His nature, that God is holy. Then the second thing, we are in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3. The second thing, he was shown by God, he showed, he showed him that the whole earth is full of his glory. The second thing that God revealed to Isaiah was the jurisdiction of his influence. And God showed Isaiah that the jurisdiction of his influence is the entire earth. That there is no corner of the earth where the glory of God cannot reach. That is important for you to know because it tells you that where you are today, in what, where God has placed you, his glory is there to assist you. If you will look for his glory, his glory is there to assist you. If God has placed you in Mogadishu, he will be in Mogadishu together with you. If God places you in Timbuktu, he will be in Timbuktu together with you. If God has placed you in Nairobi, he is in Nairobi together with you. And you are not alone. In whatever you go through, God is together with you because his glory is there exactly where you are in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you something else that you need to know. Wherever God has placed you, his glory is there. In whatever level of life that God has placed you, I want you to know that his glory is there 
to assist you. Even if you are a house girl, the glory is there to assist you. Even if you are a CEO, the glory of God is there to assist you. Even if you are the president, the glory of God is also there to assist you. And why is that? Because the whole, the jurisdiction of God's influence is the entire earth. There is nowhere you will ever go where God cannot reach you and bring you up. Therefore, I have come to tell you, people of House of Grace, Nairobi West, in whatever level of life you are in, in whatever level of life you have found yourself after this pandemic, God is coming to lift you up again. The glory of God will come to assist you. In the name of Jesus, the glory of God will see you through your financial challenges, your spiritual challenges, your physical challenges, those challenges in your family. The glory of God is coming. Somebody get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. The glory of God will lift you up from where you are and you shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Amen. Lesson number four is that when, in verse four, when, eh, verse five, when, eh, eh, where? let me tell you. Lesson number five. Is that lesson number five? Number four. Point to Lirukagani. It's five. It's five. Tasa, when God revealed himself to Isaiah, number three was God revealed his nature. Number four was that God revealed the jurisdiction of his influence. Number five, when God revealed himself to Isaiah, Isaiah made him aware of his need. You see, we said that people do not serve God because they are perfect. But when God appeared before Isaiah, when God, when God revealed himself to Isaiah, that is where now Isaiah made God to be aware of his weaknesses and told him, hey God, you have appeared lakini, I am unclean. I, am, I, am, I have unclean lips. I have a problem in my heart. God, you have appeared, but I have this problem. Let me tell you something, my friend. When God reveals himself to you on this day, let me tell you what you ought to do. You ought to come before God and begin to let him know of your weaknesses, of your area of need, of your area of failure, where you need help. This is the time for you now to reveal those things to God so that God can meet you at the point of your need. That is what Bible characters used to know. One day the Bible says, God appeared to Abraham. When God appeared to Abraham, he told Abraham, Abraham, fear not. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Abraham asked God, and what will you give me? I don't have a child. God told Abraham, talk to Apo Inje. He came outside there. He told him, look at the stars. That is how your children will be. When God reveals himself to you, that is the time for you to tell God, I have lost my job. I have been kicked out of my house. Hey, you know, God, I need a husband. God, I need a wife. God bless our family with a child. When, when Isaiah, when God revealed himself to Isaiah, Isaiah presented his need before God. So today, child of God, let it be the day when you shall whisper to God and tell God I have this need. Tell God I have this challenge. Tell God I have this problem. Tell God I need you. The pandemic has pushed me to the corner. I am held between a rock and a hard place. And I want to tell you something. God will send an angel today 
to minister to you. Where you are is not too far for God. Where the pandemic has placed you is not too far for God. There is a release of angels here today. People are going to be delivered by God. People are going to be ministered to by God. People are going to be touched by God because God has released angels to meet you at the point of your needs. Somebody say amen. Lesson number six. Indio. When God revealed himself to Isaiah, Isaiah also became aware of the needs of God. Because God has needs. There are things that God needs. God is all powerful. But there are things he needs and he cannot do for himself. For example, God needs to be worshipped and he cannot worship himself. That is why the Bible says, the Lord is seeking for people who shall worship him in spirit and in truth. That is a need that God has. God has got certain needs that he cannot do for himself. And he needs somebody to meet him at the point of his need. So Isaiah became aware of the need of God, that God needed someone to send, and he cannot send himself, that he cannot go for himself, and he needs someone to go for him when Isaiah became aware of the need that God has, he himself volunteered to meet that need. He heard in heaven and they were asking each other, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah did not say, send the bishop. Send the pastor. Oh, heaven wants to build a house. Here in Nairobi West, Isaiah did not say, let the businessmen do it alone. Let the elders do it alone. Isaiah said, here I am. Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Because as God is meeting your need, you need to have a plan of how you will also meet the needs of God. So that God is not the only one meeting needs. That as he meets our needs, we are also meeting his needs. Therefore, Isaiah said, here I am, send me. I have come to tell you that God is calling people. Today, this morning, here in House of Grace, Nairobi West, God is calling somebody. God is calling somebody because God has got needs that he cannot meet for himself. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but he cannot build a house here in Nairobi West. That is why God is asking, who will help me to build that house? Who will help me? Who will help me? Who shall I send? I need to raise an altar on Langata Road. Who shall I send? That is a need that God has. And God cannot meet that need. That is why God is calling somebody here today. God is calling you. God is calling you, my sister. God is calling you. Even you, you know. Even you, you know. God is calling you. Even you, you know. God is calling you. Because he has been talking to you. The way he has been visiting you. During this time of the pandemic. He has been visiting you. Not the way he used to visit you before. Even you, you know. The miracles you have experienced since last year when the pandemic came that, <coughs> that you, you, you have never gone to sleep on an empty stomach. That your children have gone back to school and your fees has been paid, even if it is partially. Even you, you know. Kuna kitu mungu anataka na wewe. Kuna kitu mungu anataka na wewe. The experiences that you have had, 
in this season, even you, you know. So I have come to confirm that God is calling you. God is calling somebody. God is asking, who shall go for us? Who shall work for us? Nani atatusaidia? Nani atatusaidia? And I want you today to tell God, here I am, send me. I don't have the formula. I don't know how I shall do it. Tell God, I pledged 100,000 for the building. I don't know how I shall get it, but I am here. Use me. Show me. Send me to get that harvest. Bring it to the house of God. I'm telling you, God is, look, God is calling people to build this church. Yeah. God is calling people. Then, let's finish. Verse 9. When Isaiah eh, said, here I am, send me. God told him, go and tell this people. You know, over the years, over the years, that was the need of God in the days of Isaiah. That was the need of God in the days of Jesus. That was the need of God in the days of the apostles. That is the need of God even up to today. That God wants people to be told. That is the need of God. The need of God over the years, over the years, has always been one. Tell people of the faithfulness of God. Tell people of the goodness of God. Tell people of the story of Jesus. Tell people of the mercy and of the love of God. And today, God is looking for people who can tell people. That is why God is interested in the well-being of this church. God is interested. Maybe there are people you know who are not interested in the well-being of this congregation. But let me tell you something. God is interested in the well-being of this congregation because it lays a platform for people to be told, go and tell these people. This is a platform for Kenya to be told. This is a platform for Africa to be told. This is a platform for the entire world to be told. And therefore, I want to tell you that God is interested in the well-being of this platform. And if you are interested in the well-being of this platform, you and God are together. You and God are together. If you are not interested in the well-being of this platform, verily, verily, I say unto you, you and God, you're not together. Amen, amen. Yeah. Because God wants a place where people can be told. And so God is calling you to tell people. God is calling you to build him a house, to build him a platform where people can be told. And above that, God is even calling you to tell people. Tell people in your family of the faithfulness of God. Of the faithful, tell people in your estate, tell people on social media. It is even easier now to tell people of the goodness of God. All you need to do is to post on your wall, post on Kilimani Mams, post on Kitengela United, post on Ongata Rongai, the place to be. Go post, just post, just post there because people post anything they want. Anything they want, but our people are not posting. Somebody said the other day that the harvest is plentiful and it is online, but the laborers are offline. You better get online and post. Post furiously. Post furiously. Don't worry. Don't even think that there is somebody you are bothering. Or there is something you are saying. When you get a, a, a clip from House of Grace, from the bishop, Forward it to 100 people. Well, Sijali, well, Sijali, you forward. 
It will help somebody one day when he is in the hospital. Well, let me tell you, when you are in the hospital where God removed this pastor, you cannot say, one day I posted, I sent somebody a clip and he told me, Pastor, you are sending me too many clips. Me seen a data. I don't have data bundles. But when you are in ICU and HDU, you cannot complain of not having data bundles. Because let me tell you, that clip is a miracle. Even somebody to remember you and to send you a clip telling you that you shall rise again. That God, hey, hey, you post those things. You send those clips. You tell the people. You tell the people. Don't be ashamed, Paul said. For I am not ashamed of this gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. You tell the people. God is looking for someone who will agree to tell the people. I want us to, to pray. We have only five minutes. Five minutes is enough. Because with one sentence, Isaiah answered the call of God and he became what we know today. The man who even prophesied the birth of Jesus Christ. With one sentence. It is enough. We don't need hours. I want you to stand up on your feet. I want the worship team to come. They will lead us in one song. And that one song, you need a minute to talk to God and tell God, Oh God, I am here. Send me. Send me. But I am broke. Send me. But I need a husband. Send me. I need a wife. But send me. Just send me. I don't have a good job for now. But send me. I don't have enough money, but use me. I am not healthy enough, but God, use me. I, I, that is the moment that I want to give to you. And then we finish and we go. Hosanna, Hosanna, to win be, Hosanna, Hosanna. Somebody raise your voice and begin to pray. Somebody pray. Just tell God, I am here. I am here. I am here. Send me. Use me. I am here. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. Send me, oh God. I am here, but I need. I need some money. I need a job. But use me. I need. I need. Just tell God you're what you need. Shakata la baraba baboza. Shala borobo zanta la ba. I am here, O God. I am here, O God. Use me, O God. Send me, O God. Send me, Father. Send me, Father. 
Use me, Lord. I don't know the way. I don't know the formula. I don't know how I will do it. But you can use me. You can use me. You can send me, Father. You can send me, Father. Shaka la Somebody tell God what you need him to do for you. Tell God. Tell God what you need. Tell God what you need. You need a job. You need promotion. You need your life to change. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him this is what I need. But use me. Use me. Use me. Send me, Lord. Send me, send me. Hosanna. 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 To me.